Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the restored calendar of the Most High, which we're going to be testing. And in this particular part one, we're going to go over scriptures. And then in part two, we're going to go over the calendar itself. And I'm going to explain it and break it down uh, thoroughly, why it's the way it is in part two. So y'all hold tight and uh, let's get understanding while the Most High is waking us up and bringing us back into our culture, our heritage, which we um, are to take with us into the into our land when we return. So we must be prepared at this time to receive the Most High in all of His holy ways. Now I want to tell y'all something before we get into this particular video. Follow the calendar that you know right now until you find full understanding of the scriptures. And it lines up with the calendar that's, that, that you're going to see. If it doesn't line up, write what doesn't line up down. Contact me. Let me know. But for now... If you're following the Gregorian calendar, Sabbath days and feast days, according to that calendar, go ahead and follow them for now till you find, till you get the understanding. If you're following someone else's calendar based on new moons and lunar cycles and things like that, follow that which you know for right now until you get a full understanding of his scriptures and what's written and how his calendar originally works. And um, any other type of calendar that you're, you're following in times and dates and Sabbaths and feast days, follow that until you test the scriptures and the calendar that's being presented to you in this uh in this video series. Again, follow what you know for now until you be able to prove all things until you become a second witness to what is being presented in these in this particular video series on this calendar of the most high. And again, contact me with any indiscrepancies or errors or mistakes or um if you go over these scriptures and you see something different than us following um, all three, you know, the sun, the moon, and the, the luminaries, if you find something different, let me know. But until then, I'm going with what I see in scriptures clearly written and we're going to follow what the Most High says exactly in these scriptures. So after you watch this, both these series and you have questions, you can put them in the comment section or you can email me at truesaver at gmail.com. My email is in the description box or if you want to talk, email me your number and we'll talk about this calendar and we'll go over it with the scriptures and everything if you can't understand it. But it is real simple. It, it, it's not hard. We just got to block out what we learned in order to relearn his calendar. So give yourself some time and room to think and to adjust to the Most High's words in his books and get an understanding and connect with him and uh, download the calendar, print it out, put it on the wall, go over the scriptures over and over until you could see each little section and it will unfold for you. The Most High will open your eyes and you, un you have understanding. Now, it took me a while to get to this point, but it's going to be easier for you now that I got it 
um, I'm passing down what I know and understand. And you'll better get it a lot faster than I did. Uh, but again, if you got anything you want to share with me, email it to me. Documents or ideas or, you know, the Paleo Hebrew names of the calendar. Email them to me. If you know the Paleo Hebrew star or let me say illuminary constellations that we use back in the day, let me know. E email that information to me so we can put it on the calendar and change things. So, again, this is a test calendar. This is not permanent. This is not something you should just automatically make the switch for unless you see it, unless you understand what's being said in these in this two part ser calendar series. If you see it, you understand it, you get it, it, it. Then. Go with it. And test it with me. If you see a different equinox date. That should be the last day of the Most High, 600, 364 day calendar. If you see a different one, let me know. So we're going to get things straight with, with his true Sabbaths and his true feast days. It's a huge step. Hallelujah. So let's get right to scripture and I will come back and explain this here in part two. Uh, may jump back here while I'm reading from time to time just to this first month. But in part two, we're going to go over uh, all of this. All right, let's get the script. We're going to be proving all things, brothers and sisters, with the scriptures. And we're going to show you. How the most highest year starts off and why? It's because he ordained it and he commanded it to be so. So uh, let's start right here in uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. And Yah said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Now, this is the main portion that we're going to be focusing on, but let me continue to read. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And y'all made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the luminaries also. And Yah set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And y'all saw that it was good in the evening and the morning were the four, fourth day. So he was creating all of this during the fourth day. And when he was done, it was complete at the end of the day. And we know that the next verse here. He started creating life. So this was during the fifth day. Life came into play. So once the father was done creating that day, he set everything in motion. So that the life would have the light and the warmth and would be able to sprout and grow. Brothers and sisters, and that's another, another important thing to remember and understand when we get to the calendar. And I'm going to show you why. But let's get some more evidence in the book of Jubilees, chapter 2, verses 8 and 4. And on the fourth day, he created the sun, the moon, and the stars, and set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon all the earth and to rule over the day and night, and divided the light from the darkness. And Yah appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths, and for months, and for feasts, and for years, and for Sabbaths of years, and for Jubilees, 
and for all seasons of the years. And it divided the light from the darkness and for prosperity that all things may prosper, which shoot and grow on the earth. These three kinds he made on the fourth day. So the sun is the head. The sun is like the husband. It is appointed to lead the moon and the stars in its glory, in its rotation and circuits throughout the earth and portals and gates that it goes through. So let's get to uh, more evidence here in Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra 6 and 45. It says, uh, actually 45 through 46. On the fourth day thou didst command the brightness of the sun, the light of the moon, and the arrangement of the luminaries to come into being. And thou didst command them to serve man. That's its purpose. It's, it's for, to serve man with those signs, seasons, and um, days and years. That's its purpose. Let's go back. Uh, and thou didst command them to serve man who was about to be formed. So that's the sun and the moon and the luminary's purpose is to serve man and to give us these signs and seasons and days and years. And it, it was to govern the days, the Sabbaths, the months, the feasts and uh, Sabbath of years and Jubilees. And for all seasons, you know, there's four seasons every year. With three months per season. And uh, we have a change day. At the end of every three months. Giving you instead of 90 days. For three months. You get 91 days for three months. Every three months. Very important to know and understand. So let's go over here. And get some more understanding in Psalms. Chapter 19 1 through 6. The heavens declare the glory of Yah, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is going out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them have he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Y'all see this foreshadowing of the Hamashiach right here? The head, even the Most High being the head over Yashara. Right here, it's telling you. That's its place. It's, it's, it's the head. Head of the moon, which is like the wife. Head of the luminaries, which is like the children. Coming out of his chamber. We're going to read about those chambers, which they call gates in the book of Enoch next. And rejoice of as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. So there's a lot in this, brothers and sisters, from Hamashiach being our head, our high priest, our, our king, appointed king by the father. We know the Father is the great King over all of heaven and earth. But He is appointing His Son to be King over the earth. Uh, when He returned, He's going to take His place and His position as He was appointed to be King over the earth. The Most High is King over all. He's the great King over the heaven and earth. But Hamashiach is... Yashara's head and those who connected to us the grafted in Gentiles are like the children and the same sense we are the head we have a headship over the earth as kings as well 12 tribes and um, as the head they are like helpmeets to us and children to us 
Y'all see all this foreshadowing. You could you could tell the beginning of the book from the end of the book. The most I set this theme um, from the very beginning throughout the whole book. You'll see this foreshadowing happening between the most high and his his chosen inheritance being his bride, being his us being his helpmeet. And, and with Hamashiach, he appointed to be king over us where he is the head and we're his helpmeet. And uh, those grafting in to us is like the children. And also from us, who is the head over all the nations. Some of them are like helpmeets to us, as we see in, in Abraham's household, where Eleazar was a helpmeet to um, Abraham. And some of them, um, those who were the children, were the other helpers, you know, of our brothers and sisters that joined to Abraham in that household. So it's like the father, the great parent, uh, who put his firstborn in charge when he leave, when he left the house, he put his firstborn in charge of the other children. And, um, they still your brothers and sisters and you're over them. You got the rules of the house. And if anything go wrong, he gonna, the, the father that left you in charge gonna come back, point the finger in your face and tell you, you know, what, what you did wrong, you know, and then he gonna pull out his belt and spank you. Then he gonna deal with the other children and what they did wrong up and now. But you're gonna always be first. That's just the proper order because you see that in your own households with your own children and in the household you grew up in with your own parents, but the oldest one in charge. But uh, I just want to explain that and tie that all in with this part right here with the son being the head leaning all of these uh, seasons and months and years because that's important to understand. Let's go to the book of Enoch. Um, and I'm going to explain this portion according to the calendar, uh, in part two, but let's read this. Now I'm only going to read, uh, up to verse, I think 33, but you're going to have to read the rest and we're only going to be covering the sons, the sons part so that you can understand the sons part part. Uh, in this particular video uh, about the calendar but you can read the other parts about the moon and the luminaries on your own brothers and sisters but let's get an understanding first the revolutions of the lights the book of the revolutions of the lights of heaven each as it is according to their class classes according to their period of rule and their times according to their names places of origin and according to their months that Uriel the the uh, set apart angel who was with me and is their leader showed to me and he showed me all their regulations exactly as they are for each year of the world and forever until the new creation which shall be made which will last forever and this is the first law of the lights the light called the sun its rising is in the gates of heaven that are towards the east, and its setting is in the western gates of heaven. And I saw six gates from which the sun rises, and six gates in which the sun sets, and the moon also rises and sets in those gates. And the leaders of the, of the luminaries together with those whom they lead. There are six in the east and six in the west all exactly in place, one next to another, to the other. And there are many windows to the south and to the north of those gates. And first there rises the greater light, named the sun, and its disk is like the disk of heaven. And the whole of it is full of fire, which gives light and warmth. And uh, I'm going to make a video about I know there's plenty of videos out there about how the Most High made the heavens and the earth. Uh, this is part of his design. 
if you can picture that in your mind. But anyway, we'll, I'll make a video about that in the future. And we'll go over all the scriptures concerning what it looks like. It ain't no globe, I can tell you that. I mean, at least the earth ain't the globe. But the firmament that encases us is like the sun. So we we're gonna see all the trickery that they played on us in uh at in school, you know, in convincing us that the earth itself looked like you know, was like um the sun round and but it's actually the firmament. The firmament looks that way. And it and it separates the waters above from the waters below. And there's waters below in the deep underneath the earth. But anyway, we'll get to all that in the future. And the whole of it is full of fire, which gives light and warmth. The wind blows the chariots on which it ascends, and the sun goes down to the sky and returns through the north in order to reach the east and is led so that it comes to the appropriate gate and shines in the in the sky in this way it rises in the first month in the large gate namely it rises through the fourth of those six gates that are towards the east and before i get to reading these gates let's just take a look at the calendar oh and by the way um i've been knowing I think since 2014 I just never really mentioned it on my channel uh, I've been knowing that the earth itself was not no spinning ball you know globe with planets and stuff like that I've been knowing that for a while I just never got around to putting out a video about that that wasn't my focus but in the future I'll put together everything concerning it that proves right here in scriptures how the father made his earth and his heavens let's go to this calendar all right right here i put the fourth gate because d during the first month the sun itself is coming through the fourth gate on the east and on the west it's gonna set through that gate it's gonna rise through the other fourth gate so it's gonna stay on that pattern for the full month for the full month and then it's gonna go into the fifth gate for the second month and so on and so forth until we get to uh, the sixth gate for the third month but it stops and it turns back around or at least it, it, when it goes back to the other side it goes right back through the sixth gate again for the fourth month we're gonna read that let me pull up the fourth month see it comes back and it starts its count downward it goes all the way down from six to one and then all the way up from one to six and then that's it starts that again over and over and over again and uh again we're going to explain all these other things i got written here in part two but let's get let's get back to some reading okay this is the first month right here and in that fourth gate through which the sun rises in the first month there are 12 window openings from which wherever they are, they are open, flames come out. When the sun rises in the heaven, it goes out through that fourth gate for 30 days. And exactly. Let me do like this. And exactly in the fourth gate in the west of heaven, it goes down. And in those days, the day grows daily longer and the night grows nightly shorter until the 30th morning 
So you got 30 days during that first month. And y'all going to see this pattern unfold. It's going to be always be 30, 30, and then 31. And it just start. It just repeats over and over. Most high never changes. So let's see. Let's see this thing travel from the fourth to the fifth gate now. And on that day. Um, wait a minute. Did I read this part? And on that day. The day becomes longer than the night by a double part. And the day amounts to exactly 10 parts and the night amounts to 8 parts. Now let's get to the 5th gate. Where is it? Wait, wait. Right here. Here we go. And the sun rises from the, that 4th gate and sets in the 4th gate and returns to the 5th gate in the east for 30 mornings and it rises from it and sets in the fifth gate this whole second month fifth gate all the way to the 30th and then the day becomes longer by two parts and the day amounts to 11 parts and the night becomes shorter and amounts to seven parts let's get to the fourth month third month and the sun returns to the east and comes to the sixth gate and rises and sets in the sixth gate for 31 mornings because of its sign. What sign? Let's go to the third month. This is the season change day. Let me move this over. Season change day. The 31st. Every three months. Every 90 days. There's a season change day. Y'all see it? Easy. The Most High's calendar is easy. Let's go back. And on that day, the day becomes longer than the night. And the day becomes double the night. And the day amounts to 12 parts. And the night becomes short and amounts to 6 parts. Now, it's going to go right back through the 6th six, six gate again. To start all over again. And the sun rises up. So that the day may grow shorter. And the night longer. And the sun returns to the east. And comes to the sixth gate. And rises from it. And sets 30 mornings. Y'all see that? You had your 31. You're starting summer now. You already completed spring right here. Here's summer. And when the 30 mornings have been completed. The day be um, becomes shorter. By exactly one part. And the day amounts to 11 parts. And the night uh, to 7 parts. 30 days. Through the 6th gate. Now let's get to the 5th gate. And the sun goes out from the west through the 6th gate. And goes to the east and rises to the 5th gate for 30 mornings. And it sets in the west again. And the 5th gate in the west. On that day, the day becomes shorter by two parts, and the day amounts to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. And let's get to the last month of summer. Right here. And the sun rises from the fifth gate and sets in the fifth gate in the west. And rises in the fourth gate for thirty-one mornings because of its sign. And sets in the west. Remember that sign is that extra day added at the end of the season. It's a season change day. On that day, the day becomes equal with night and is of equal length. And the night amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts. So you got an equinox on the sixth month. Let me pull that up. Oh, wait a minute. Let me pull up the fifth month first. And then the sixth month. And by the way, I forgot to mention that uh, this calendar is available for download and available for your testing as well. We're going to test this calendar for the next two or three years. 
any adjustments that need to be made, we will make them at that time. Like adding Paleo Hebrew name of the month up here and uh, changing these Gregorian um, Greek style constellations to the Hebrew ones. If we ever figure that out, uh, we'll change that out on this calendar. This is a test calendar, brothers and sisters. Okay, right here at the end of every six, every six months of the Most High's calendar, every six months, you're going to have an equal day, equal night. So at the end of six months, there's an equal day and equal night. At the end of the 12th month, there's an equal day, equal night. Two of them every year. So I just wanted to show you all that. Let's go back to script. And uh, we don't have to read all of this right here. You see the pattern. I want you all to read up to 30. Let's see. 32, 33, 34. I'm going to go ahead and read this last gate for the 12th month. Okay. Right here. Let's start right here. And on that day, the sun rises from the second gate and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third gate for 31 mornings and sets in the west of the sky. This is the 12th month. Coming back to the third gate. It came back to the third gate. And we're going to see all that when we do go over every month of the calendar. We're going to go over it thoroughly so you can get a good understanding of, of the Most High's calendar. And on, and on that day, the night becomes shorter and amounts to nine parts. And the day amounts to nine parts. And we saw that at the sixth month. And we're seeing it again at the 12th month. And the night becomes equal with the day. And the year mounts to exactly 364 days. We got one more scripture I want to go to. To prove, to, to tie all the sand and jubilees. And the length of the day and the night and the shortness of the day and the night. They are different because of the journey of the sun. Because of it, it journey, its journey becomes daily longer and nightly shorter. And this is the law and the journey of the sun and its return as often as it returns. Sixty times it re returns and rises. That is the great eternal light which forever and ever is named the sun. And this that rises is the great light which is named after its appearance. As Yahweh commanded. And it rises and sets. It neither decreases nor rests. But runs day and night. In its chariot. And its light is seven times brighter. Than that of the moon. But in size the two are equal. They're both, they're both equal. So how do you have. The sun being. What. Uh, what they say. A hundred times the size of, I don't know, Jupiter or something like that. You know, we know that's all pagan deities anyway. Pagan, um, uh, mighty ones that they call upon with those planet names that they, you know, name them so called planets. But right away, you know, somebody's lying and it ain't the most high. It's not the most high, y'all. So let's get to Jubilees and let's go down to chapter six. Oop, too far. All right. This is Jubilees chapter six through, I mean, chapter six, 30 through 38. And all the days of the commandment will be 52 weeks of days. And these will make the entire year complete. Thus, it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tables. 
and there is no neglect in this commandment for a single year or from year to year. Y'all hear that? 52 weeks, 364 days. Well, well, it will never change. And command thou the children of Yahshua that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year. And they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons, and their years will be dislodged from this order, and they will disturb the seasons, and the years will be dislodged, and they will neglect their ordinances, and all the children of Yashara will forget and will not find the path of years and will forget the new moons or the new months and seasons and Sabbaths and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years for I know and from henceforth shall I declare it unto thee and it and it is not of my own devising for the book lieth written before me, and on the heavenly tables the division of days is ordained. Least they forget the feast of the covenant, and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles, after their error and after their ignorance. Let me see if I can get that. Okay. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, now it disturbeth the seasons and cometh in from year to year, ten days too soon. For this reason the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day of feast day, which we, which we do right now. Y'all going by the Gregorian calendar, you're making the, that feast day, the Sabbath day, in a, uh, you're putting it on an unclean day that wasn't ordained by the Most High. And they will confound all the days, the set apart with the unclean, and the unclean day with the set apart. For they will go wrong as to the months, Sabbaths, feasts, and jubilees. For this reason I command to testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death, talking to Moses, after Moses' death, thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new months and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals. And they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. Y'all see our era, our eternal era? Now, the reason why I call this months... They put the wrong translation in here as moon. And everybody think we got to go by the moon to start the month off. And no, no, that's the heathens where we're going after their era and their ignorance. But now that we're coming back to the ways of the most high, we can, we're correcting all this. So brothers and sisters, y'all go to part two and let's, Take a look at the calendar. Shalom.